Hello. In this lecture, we'll discuss graphs of rational functions. So we're going to do a brief review of how to find vertical and horizontal asymptotes of a rational function. Then we'll discuss what the graph of a rational function looks like near vertical asymptotes, present a few guidelines for drawing by hand reasonably accurate graphs of rational functions, and go in reverse. Given a graph of a rational function, can we come up with a reasonable guess as to what the function should have been? So remember that if r of x is given as p of x over q of x, a rational function in reduced form, meaning if there are any shared factors between p of x and q of x, they've already been canceled out, then vertical asymptotes exactly occur at the zeros of q of x, and horizontal asymptotes depend on the degree and leading coefficients of p and q respectively. There are a few possibilities. If the degree of the denominator is larger than the degree of the numerator, then y equals zero is a horizontal asymptote, while if the degree of the numerator is larger than that of the denominator, there are no horizontal asymptotes. Finally, if the two have equal degree, there is a horizontal asymptote given by y equals the ratio of the leading coefficient of the numerator and denominator. Now the asymptotes of a rational function provide important information for how you're going to graph it. If the rational function has a vertical asymptote at x equals a, because the graph cannot cross the vertical asymptote as x gets closer to a, the height of the graph is forced to either go up to infinity or down to minus infinity. Now if r of x has a horizontal asymptote at y equals c, then the graph must approach y equals c as x goes all the way to the right or left, in other words as x approaches plus or minus infinity. Consequently, the end behavior of the function is that the rational function approaches c in either direction as x approaches infinity or minus infinity. Now, if you wish to produce a graph of a rational function, there's a few general steps that will be quite helpful. Find and graph all of the vertical and horizontal asymptotes of the function. Then plot the x and y intercepts. Now on either side of each vertical asymptote, determine whether the function goes to plus or minus infinity. There are a couple of ways to do this, which we'll see. And then if you're still unsure what the graph looks like, just plot a few points by hand to get a better idea. Now suppose r of x is a rational function that has a specific vertical asymptote that you've already found, x equals a. On either side, to the left or right of this vertical line x equals a, the graph is either going up towards infinity or down to minus infinity. So here is our vertical asymptote, and let's look to the left. Maybe we're going up, or maybe we're going down. Similarly, to the right of x equals a, maybe we're going up, or maybe we're going down. The sign of the rational function indicates what's happening. If the rational function is positive to one side of a, then it must be going up to infinity. Consequently, if the rational function is negative, on one side of x equals a, then the graph must be going to minus infinity. So if you can determine on one side or the other of x equals a, if the graph must be positive or negative, you've determined whether it goes to positive or negative infinity. Now the sign of the rational function can always be determined by testing points between x equals a, the vertical asymptote in question, but also between any other vertical asymptote or x-intercepts. So make sure that you're definitely in between the vertical asymptote you're looking at and all other vertical asymptotes and x-intercepts, and then you can merely test a point. We'll also see examples of how you can kind of reason out positive versus negative without having to compute any particular values. So suppose r of x is a rational function, it's already in reduced form, in other words, you found any holes and eliminated them. Assume that the rational function has a known vertical asymptote at x equals a, that is, you have found a root of the denominator in reduced form. Recall that when we went over how to graph polynomials, the multiplicity of roots gave us some information, and similarly here, the multiplicity of roots of the denominator of a rational function gives us information about how the graph looks near that vertical asymptote. If we have a root of even multiplicity in the denominator, then on either side of the vertical asymptote, r of x does the same thing. It either goes to plus infinity on both sides or goes to minus infinity on both sides. Here, for example, is a root of even multiplicity at x equals a, and it can go up on both sides, but it might also go down on both sides. You don't know which one until you have more information, but it does the same thing on both sides. In contrast, if you have a root of odd multiplicity, then you do the opposite thing on both sides. Possibly you go up on one side and down on the other. For example, you might go up on the right and down on the left, 
or maybe you go up on the left and down on the right. You don't yet know which one, but you know it has to do opposite behavior on either side of the asymptote when you have a root of odd multiplicity, which gave you that vertical asymptote. Let's go through an example. Sketch the graph of r of x equals 3x plus 3 over 2x plus 4. Now this is already in reduced form. There are no shared factors to cancel out. So all we have to do are start finding asymptotes. To find vertical asymptotes, we're going to set the denominator equal to 0 and solve for x. This doesn't take a whole lot of work. x equals minus 2. So there is a vertical asymptote at x equals minus 2. Let's find horizontal asymptotes. So the numerator and denominator have the same degree. Therefore, there is a horizontal asymptote given by y equals the ratio of leading coefficients. And the leading coefficient of the numerator was 3 from the 3x. And the leading coefficient in the denominator is 2 from the 2x. So we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 3 halves. Now let's find some intercepts. To find the x-intercepts, we set the function equal to 0. Now for a rational function to be 0, we have a numerator and a denominator. In other words, I have one number divided by another. How can one number divided by another be zero? The numerator must be zero. So finding roots of a rational function boils down to finding roots of the polynomial, which is the numerator. So we set 3x plus 3 equal to zero. We quickly solve that x must be minus 1. Now let's find the y-intercept. Now we set x equal to zero and compute the result r of 0 is just going to boil down to be 3 fourths. So we have found there is a vertical asymptote of x equals minus 2, and we also found that it was of multiplicity 1. The denominator of our function 2x plus 4 doesn't have roots of higher multiplicity there. There's a horizontal asymptote of y equals 3 halves, there's an x-intercept of x equals negative 1, and a y-intercept of y equals 3 fourths. So let's plot the asymptotes and the intercepts. Let's take advantage of the information we found out. Here are our coordinate axes. Here is the vertical asymptote of x equals minus 2, and the horizontal asymptote of y equals 3 halves. Here is the x-intercept at x equals minus 1, and the y-intercept at y equals 3 fourths, just below y equals 1. Now how do we draw in the curve? Imagine x is less than minus 2. So we've already found all of the vertical asymptotes, there's only one, and all of the roots, there's only one. So we could plot any point we want to the left of minus 2. For example, let's pick x equals minus 10. Our numerator, 3 times minus 10 plus 3, is negative 27. And 2 times minus 10 plus 4 is negative 16. I have negative 27 over negative 16. I don't particularly care what the value is. I only care about whether it's positive or negative. But I have a negative number over a negative number. It must be positive. So for x to the left of minus 2, the rational function is positive. Another way you can think about this without plugging in a particular number is imagine I have an x that is just a little bit smaller than negative 2. So it's very close to negative 2, which means this quantity in the numerator is very close to negative 3. It's very close to negative 2, which means the denominator is very close to 0, and that's important. To be close to 0 might be positive or might be negative, whereas to be close to minus 3 in the numerator is definitely negative. So when x is close to minus 2, the numerator is definitely negative, but the denominator, being close to 0, might be negative and might be positive. But now we just ask, if I'm a little bit less than minus 2, 2x is a little bit less than minus 4, and the denominator is negative. So I have definitely negative over just barely negative. Overall, to the left of minus 2, the rational function is positive. So since we are positive to the left of minus 2, and we have a vertical asymptote, we must be going to plus infinity. So we sketch that in. As x approaches minus infinity, r of x must approach that horizontal asymptote of 3 halves. So we can sketch it like this. Now what we haven't indicated here is maybe the graph goes below the asymptote and then comes back and approaches it from the other side. We don't yet have enough information to solve that. What you would essentially be asking is, does the graph ever cross the line y equals 3 halves? So you could set r of x equal to 3 halves, and you will determine that there is in fact no solution. So the graph never crosses the line y equals 3 halves. That's a little extra information that isn't always asked, and usually 
in our courses that we teach, we don't ask that information. So you're perfectly fine just drawing this approaching three halves from one side without being too strict about knowing whether it does from one or the other. Now let's look at numbers in between negative two and negative one. This is our vertical asymptote at negative two. This is our root at negative one. So we could plug in a number. What's a number in between negative two and negative one? You could do negative 1.5. And if you plug negative 1.5 in here, you'll get a negative number. However, there are other ways we could have determined that. For example, this vertical asymptote corresponded to a root of multiplicity one. Therefore, the two sides of this vertical asymptote do different things. And we've already determined it goes up on this side, so it has to go down on that side. Okay. Now, if we keep moving x to the right, we have to go through the intercepts and then approach the horizontal asymptote of y equals 3 halves. So there's not a whole lot of choice here. Let's do another example. Let's sketch the graph of x squared over 2 times x plus 1 squared times x minus 3. Again, we're already in reduced form. There are no shared factors. There are no holes in the graph. So we're just going to pass right to finding asymptotes and intercepts. Vertical asymptotes are found by setting the denominator equal to zero, and the denominator is already given in fully factored form. So x equals negative one and x equals three are the two vertical asymptotes. Horizontal asymptotes, remember, depend on the respective degrees of the numerator and denominator. The denominator is of degree three. We would have an x squared term here times an x there, so overall we're gonna get an x cubed in the denominator. The denominator is of degree three, while the numerator is only of degree two. And since the denominator has larger degree, we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. To find an x-intercept, we set the numerator equal to zero. There's only one, it's at x equals zero. To find a y-intercept, we plug in x equals zero and we simply compute the result and we get out a zero. So here's what we've determined so far. We have vertical asymptotes of negative one, which is of multiplicity two. Negative one is a root of multiplicity two down in the denominator. And we have a vertical asymptote of x equals three, which is of multiplicity one. We have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero, and the x and y intercepts are both of the origin zero comma zero. So let's plot all that information down. Here's our uh, coordinate axes. Here's the vertical asymptote of x equals negative one, the vertical asymptote x equals three, the horizontal asymptote y equals zero, and the only intercept that we have. Now we'll try to draw the curve. For x to the left of minus one, because there are no more vertical asymptotes and no more roots to find over to the left of minus one, we can plug in any test value you want. For example, let's plug in x equals negative a thousand. And I don't really care what the value is, as long as I can determine whether it's positive or negative. My numerator, negative a thousand squared, is definitely positive. Two times something squared, definitely positive. Negative a thousand minus three, definitely negative. Overall, way off to the left, I am definitely negative. So to the left of x equals minus one, the graph is negative, and since it has to go to plus or minus infinity, it has to go to minus infinity. So we can go ahead and draw that there. Now, as x goes further and further left, we know we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. So let's approach that. Now, what about to the right of x equals minus one? There's a couple of things you can do. We know that we have this a vertical asymptote and this root. We could take a test value of something between negative one and zero. For example, I could plug in x equals negative one half and see what happens. However, we also know that this vertical asymptote has even multiplicity. So whatever it did on one side, it does the same thing on the other. So to the right of x equals minus one, we are also going to minus infinity. And we're gonna go ahead and connect up to that intercept that we found. Now, for x between zero and three, in other words, between this root and this vertical asymptote, you can plug in a test value. For example, you can plug in x equals one and see whether you get a positive or negative out. However, we also know that the sign of the denominator will not change. The sign of the denominator could only possibly change at x equals minus one and x equals three. So between here and here, the sign of the denominator can't possibly change. However, the numerator might change sign at zero, but the numerator has a root of even multiplicity at x equals zero, so its sign doesn't change. It only touches the axis. So that's another way to see that over here, we have to be negative because we were negative here, and this is a root of even multiplicity. So since we're negative, as we approach three from that side, we have to go off to minus infinity. And now all we have to answer is what happens to the right of x equals three. 
and we have a few options to determine this information. Because there are no more roots or vertical asymptotes, we can plug in any test value larger than three that we want. That might be four, it might be 4,000, it doesn't really matter. You're only interested in whether the result is positive or negative. I prefer to approach it like this. The vertical asymptote of x equals three had odd multiplicity. Therefore, it does opposite things on both sides. And since we already knew it went down to this side, it has to go up on this one. So we go ahead and plot that. And now, as x approaches infinity and keeps going further and further to the right, we have a horizontal asymptote to approach, so go ahead and draw that in. Let's do an example sort of in the reverse direction. Here is the graph of a rational function. Find an equation that matches all of the information given. So what we want to do is present f of x as a rational function for polynomials p and q. We already have given vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 2 and at x equals 3. That tells us that x plus 2 and x minus 3 must be factors of q of x, but we have more information than that. If we look at the vertical asymptote of x equals minus 2, on the left we go up and on the right we also go up. So since it did the same thing on both sides, x plus 2 must occur with even multiplicity. Similarly, if you look at the vertical asymptote of x equals 3, it does opposite things on both sides, so that must occur with odd multiplicity. The simplest way we can do this to give an even multiplicity to the factor x plus 2 and odd multiplicity to the factor x minus 3 is to go with x plus 2 to the second power and x minus 3 to the first. Here we're not looking for a unique solution, just a simple enough solution that matches the information we have. So here's what we have so far. We've got a good candidate for our denominator, x plus 2 squared, x minus 3. This matches the vertical asymptotes and with the correct multiplicities of even versus odd. Now f of x has a 0 at x equals 1. That is a point that is given to us. When x equals 1, y is equal to 0. This tells us that x minus 1 is a factor of the numerator p of x. Also, it's worth pointing out from the graph that we know we cross at x equals 1. This tells us that x minus 1 is a root of the numerator with odd multiplicity, and the first power will be the simplest way to go there. But we should introduce this unknown constant c, either in the numerator or multiplying the entire thing. It doesn't matter whether you put c here or factor it out and multiply the entire expression. You'll end up, I mean, it's the same thing, they're equal. Now, why do we need this unknown constant c? We haven't yet accounted for the other intercept we were given, that when x is equal to 0, y should equal 1. In other words, f of 0 must equal 1, and if you didn't have c here, if you just cross that out, you would not get 1 here. But multiplying by an unknown c will not change any of the roots or vertical asymptotes but it will tell us that f of 0 is c over 12. And since we want f of 0 to equal 1, that tells us that c should equal 12. So a reasonable equation for a rational function with the graph above is 12 times x minus 1 over x plus 2 squared times x minus 3. It matches the information we have, that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals minus 2 of even multiplicity, that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3 of odd multiplicity. It matches the intercepts that we were given. Also observe, it now also gives the correct horizontal asymptote. It appears, although it wasn't explicitly labeled, that we probably have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. As x goes to the right and left, it seems to be settling down on y equals 0. And the function we have has a polynomial of degree 1 in the numerator and degree 3 in the denominator, and therefore does have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. This tells us, for example, we don't want our numerator. We know it has to be a constant times x minus 1 to an odd power, and I don't want to put x minus 1 to the 11th power or something like that. It would give me too high a degree in the numerator, and it would not match this horizontal asymptote of y equals 0.